Welcome to Urban Hood, your learning platform. Urban Food Alliance is a 501c nonprofit which reaches out to the needy and the homeless who need warm, fresh cooked, nutritional meals. Urban Food Alliance services the needy in our neighborhoods. Uh, and definitely practice with paper, paper trading before you get into the money with real markets. All right, so once again, this is just a quick little disclaimer, guys. Um, the whole point of this, for, for those of you that are new, every week we do this um, midday, mar I'm sorry, not midday, uh, we weekday market talk to prepare you guys for the upcoming week, see if there's any uh, news coming up, any earnings events, a few price action that uh, price action uh, tickers that I'm looking at, uh, see how the price is performing, see if look, something's looking to break out, uh, simply to just uh, show you guys uh, what's uh, coming up in this upcoming week, right? Uh, so <clears throat> uh, before we get into the prices and the tickers, I'm just going to talk about a few events that are coming up this week, right? Uh, we have federal, uh, the the Fed is speaking this week around uh, actually 8 a.m. tomorrow in the morning. Um, that's uh, you know going to be interesting to see what uh, what what the what the Fed has to say. Uh, but in terms of the economic data, there's not really much going on besides uh, federal chair Powell speaking on uh, Monday. Like I said, uh, we have the unemployment claims coming out on Thursday at 8:30. So uh, nothing uh, nothing as far as economic data. But we do have a lot of earnings coming up, and I'm going to be pulling it up shortly to show you guys. <clears throat> so you guys should all be able to see my screen right. So we have some pretty big names reporting this week, right? I mean, it's packed, right? So there's a lot of uh, money earning opportunities here. Um, so once again, we always like to pra practice proper risk management, and with that, we always like to make uh, proper trades as well, right? With backed up with proper analysis. So. Right off the bat, right, I mean, I'm seeing some very big names, right? We see Tesla, Intel, Coca-Cola, um, Netflix, right? So these are some big names that are going to be reporting. Obviously, there's are, there are a lot of other companies that are reporting, but uh, a few big names that I'm looking at this week are Tesla and Netflix um, as the main ones, right? So once again, this is just to show you guys a few earnings that are coming up. Um, now, I'm going to get into a few tickers that are there on my watch. Um, so let's kind of get right into it, right? First things first, let's take a look at SPY, where SPY has been um, been headed, right? So we did get a nice little recovery here. We did get a high of 358, and since then, we've kind of been in this, uh, hit a nice strong support around 321, and then now we're pushing back up. Uh, 350 is a strong level of resistance right now. A break above that, I think we might see some upside. Once again, this, this week is pumped up with so many different earnings play, uh, so there's going to be a lot on the line this upcoming week. Uh, once again, um, if you take a look at this, it's been on a, a nice consistent uptrend though, right? I mean, it's been respecting this trend line here. It's trading above moving averages. Let's take a look on, on a more shorter time frame. Yeah. So right off the bat, right, we're seeing some nice trend line forming here. Um, so overall, it seems to be in a nice little uptrend. Uh, 350 is some resistance above that. We might see it hit 354, right? But in any case scenario, it does break below uh, support. 345 is the next support. Uh, and then after that, I see the support being around that 342, 343 range uh, for the SPY, right? Um, let's take a look at the futures. Let's see how the futures are, are um, doing, right? So the, uh, the S&P futures are up about uh, 24, 24 points, right? Um, nothing nothing crazy happening right now, right? I mean, it's just uh, green. Uh, we did gap up slightly. Let's take a look at the, uh, the NQs. Um, likewise, right? They're up about 1%. So we're seeing some nice movement. Uh, we're getting a bounce off the strong level of support right here. We did gap up. We do have some uh, overall resistance around uh, 12022. Other than that, right, there's nothing uh, nothing crazy going on. The futures are green, so that's that. Now, as far as some, some tickers that I want to take a look at, if you guys take a look at um, Tesla on the four-hour chart, what we're seeing, it's sitting at a crucial level of support. Right, 435 is a crucial level of support for Tesla, uh, along with uh, it also sitting at uh, the 50-day simple moving average. If we do get a push, if you do get a bounce from this, uh, we might see it break these key levels that I have here. Um, for those of you, let me just zoom in so you guys can see it a little bit better. Right there, right? So uh, my key levels right there essentially act as price targets. Above 445, right, I think it has room to 453.45. Above that, I think it has room to 463.88. Once again, keep in mind the stocks do have, stocks do tend to go higher into earnings. And um, I have the same expectation for Tesla. Once again, anytime it comes to earnings, guys, it's extremely risky if you're not 
familiar with the risk that comes along with, comes along with trading options, or especially with earnings, uh, definitely make yourself familiar with that. Now, I'm going to pull up, bear with me, uh, my other screen. Okay, so you guys should be able to see the screen right now, right? What we're seeing on this screen is uh, uh, Tesla earnings, right? So the average surprise we're looking at is roughly 5%. Um, and as you guys can see, it had, it's, uh, Tesla has been having a five-year growth of at least 12.4%. 12, 12 uh, they, they report earnings on the 21st. So uh, once again, we want to keep this in mind. And it's just uh, this is just a little, little picture to see what's really going on with Tesla. Now, another thing I want to show you guys, the thing with Tesla, uh, options monitor. So one thing that I like to look for is unusual options activity, right? And right off the bat, what we're seeing is um, significantly more volume on the call side, right? So around the uh, 450 calls that are expiring in about 33 days have around almost triple the amount of volume as the 450 puts that are expiring on uh, in about 33 days, right? So once again, as far as the sentiment, it looks a little bit bullish. Uh, once again, you have to look a little bit more into the financials of the company to decide any specific option trade. Um, but that's as far as I have for um, good old Tesla. Now, moving on, next thing I want to take a look at is Apple, right? Apple, nice little downtrend. What we're seeing is a nice little uh, triangle wedge pattern it's forming, right? Uh, if it breaks out above this, I think above 122 is then I would only play it to the upside, maybe with 123 calls expiring a week or two weeks out, uh, make some money there. Other than that, um, I think 118.22 is also a crucial level of support. That's only why I see it going up from here. Um, but in any case scenario, it does bounce back. Um, uh, I think if it breaks below 118.22, uh, we I wouldn't be too surprised if the stock hits around 115, 112 area. Now, for those of you that are within our gold membership, I think we signaled buying stock Apple, I'm, if, if I'm not mistaken, around 109, 1012 area. So for those of you that did sell around this 127 area, uh, makes a decent profit there. Moving on, Microsoft, right? Just looking at some large cap stocks. What we're seeing is uh, previously, this was <clears throat> a crucial level of resistance, which is now acting as a crucial level of support, as you see here. So once again, very similar. It's also kind of in a, in a, in a pattern, as you guys can see here. So let's kind of see how it plays out. It is trading up. Uh, with the elections coming up, there's obviously a lot of certain uncertain uncertainty around the markets. Uh, so let's all be prepared for that as well. Let's take a look at Amazon. Amazon, we saw it dip pretty low, and then buyers pushed it up pretty aggressively. Uh, this stock has, you know, kind of been range bound for you know a while now, right? It hasn't really broke above, uh, you know, this area here, but it's been kind of just bouncing up and down. We're kind of seeing a a a, a bottom form right here, right? So kind of like a cup, and then price did dip lower, but it, it was able to push back up. A little bit closer to the undervalued side right here, around 40 points on the RSI. Um, so that's that. Uh, let me see if I have any other information here. So another thing that I like to do, guys, this is a service that UFA provides. It's uh, access to unusual options activity as well as dark pool information, flow algo, all that good stuff. Um, essentially, what you get to see is where the big hedge funds, wealth managers, pension funds are putting your money, right? Um, and this is mainly done through dark pools, right? This for those of you that are aware of what dark pools are. Uh, and you guys can see, you guys get to see where large orders are being put in, right? There's a $114 million trade placed around 1248 for Boeing, uh, 680,000 shares were traded around that price point, right? So all in all, this is what also what I like to take a look at. Now, if you guys take a look at Tesla, right? If anyone's looking to play Tesla calls this week, uh, as far as earnings, uh, let's let this look right. So as you guys can see, someone paid almost a million dollars, well, oh, a, a little over a million dollars in premium uh, for 470 calls that are expiring on the 23rd, right? So once again, uh, there's a lot of bullish sentiment, right? We haven't really seen some large trades as far as puts. Um, another stock I'm going to take a look at right here is Neil, right? Neil, uh, as you guys know, has gained a lot of traction in the last week. And if I think I have my Bloomberg open here. Yeah, so if you guys take a look at Bloom, uh, the Bloomberg terminal here, uh, Neo. Uh, the 23, uh, the the uh, what is it, thirty dollar calls expiring on the 23rd have a volume of 51,000 contracts, right? Then if you look at uh, the other side, 
the volume is not is not as significant, right? And then even even if you move on to the the following expirations, 19 day expiration, 26 day, there's significantly more volume on the upside, right? So there's a lot of bullish sentiment going into uh, into Neo. That's that as far as Neo goes. Um, and pull it up here, just to kind of show you guys the price. As you guys can see here, there is a minor gap that does need to be filled right around this area. Uh, with the current trend it's going on, I don't know how it's going to, uh, how exactly when it's going to come down and fill this gap again. But 27.8 was my crucial level of uh, resistance. Uh, as you guys can see, it did break it. Now it did retest it. As of right now, it's still pretty bullish. And the reason why is because the, the strong volume, it's holding the price point. We haven't seen some strong selling happen, uh, especially during market hours other than uh, seeing some resistance around 29.4. Now, my personal pr price target for NEO as of uh, uh, short term is obviously $30. If it breaks above $30, I'm gonna continue playing some calls to the upside. Um, so that's the, that's what I'm looking for right now for NEO. A little bit a little bit on the overextended side, but uh, the current trend as far as how it's pushing up seems to be still bullish. Um, other than that, guys, this is all that I'm really looking at this week. I'm sorry, one more ticker. Uh, Blink, right? So Blink, uh, for those of you that are gold members, uh, I think a lot of a lot of us uh, in the gold membership made a pretty pretty good uh, profit on this. Actually, um, let's take a look at it. I think uh, some members made a little over fifty percent, a little over sixty percent on this specific trade. Uh, now, what we're seeing with Blink, right? We kind of see saw this large cup form, and now we might see this nice little handle form, right? And this this is this what this is, this is a small cap stock, so it's also catalyst driven. Uh, and what we're seeing is this nice little handle forming as well as a resistance at $10, which is also roughly uh, the 50-day simple moving average. If you're going to push above this, I wouldn't be too surprised if we see a nice pop uh, anytime soon, right? But just to show you guys, guys, this is a little bit more riskier than uh, your average stock. This is not something that you would buy in your long-term portfolio, right? Maybe, maybe not. Um, this is, you know, not a large cap stock, right? This is a little bit more riskier. This is more spec a little bit more speculative. but all in all, the reason why this is on my radar is because this has been this is this has been having a lot of catalyst around it, and we're also seeing a nice little cup and handle formation. If we do get a break above ten dollars, my next price target is going to be around eleven. Uh, for those of that are in the gold members, a lot of the gold the gold members bought around this area right here, around the seven dollar mark. But um, what we're seeing is if we can get a break above this, I wouldn't be too surprised if we see some retest of the next highs. So that's that, and I. Think I think I had something else on Blink. Let's see. Um, also, uh, while I'm at this slide over here about advanced options, for those of you that are not uh, familiar with us, once again, through Urban Food, we do provide uh, courses and where you guys can educate yourself and learn a little bit more about financial markets. Uh, we teach uh, technical analysis basic, at the basic level and advanced level, as well as different advanced option strategies, right? Advanced options and advanced uh, technical is taught by me. I think someone else is actually going to be taking over the advanced technical and uh, advanced options is going to be done by me. But this is just a rough uh, a slide that's showing you different scenarios as far as uh, you know debit spreads, right? Once again, this is just one option strategy. Uh, this is a thorough, a very well rehearsed uh, presentation, right? So a lot of students who took this class saw that there was a lot of benefit that came out of this. So anyone looking to enhance and take the trading to the next level, I highly recommend you take this uh, and simply educate yourself. But that's what we have here. Uh, another thing that I want to show you guys as far as Blink is uh, just some insider transactions that were going on. Um, so first things first, right? If you take a look at the, uh, where is it? Um, the percent change in insider positions has been uh, about two and a half percent change in uh, insider transactions. Now, if you take a look, any time that there's been an there's, that there's been an insider uh, buy the stock, as you guys can see here, bottom around here, bottom around here, the stock has continued to rally. Right now, the reason why I'm a little bit bullish on this specific stock is because let me just draw on this to show you guys um, is because. Insider transaction, there's some buying activity that happened around this area right here. This is around the price point of around 757, a little bit higher than what uh, I told the, the gold members to buy it at. But what we see is I see this as a crucial level of support, right? So we are in profits right now. But as you guys can see, the last time something like this happened, the stock did see some nice highs. Uh, and then we did see this to be another buying point. And then now if we do get a break above 
14, $12. I think we're going to see some new highs for the stock once again. Um, so that's as far as the insider transactions go. Um, let me see if there's any other information here that would be of importance. Um, another thing is we're seeing a lot of institutional money going into this, right? Uh, if you take a look at the ownership summary, um, right here, right? So we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, institutional money coming in here. Um, as you guys can see, they have a decent amount of positions, right? A little over 400,000 shares, BlackRock. Uh, so Morgan Stanley. So there's a lot of, there's not a significant dollar amount, Wells Fargo, Royal Bank of Canada. So once again, there's a lot of money coming into it. Um, that's usually a good sign when institutions begin to uh, dive into a certain ticker. Um, so like I said, guys, that's really all I have for you guys for this week. If you guys have any tickers that you guys want me to take a look at, please write it in the chat box. But before you do that, guys, please write it with some sort of context. This way I can uh, better cater to your specific ticker. Um, so I'm going to look over at the chat box, see if there's anything else want me to take a look at. Where is this chat box? All right. So let's see what we have up here. Um, Tesla, Netflix, what are the factors we should look for when they report the quarterly results? Um, that's a little bit more on the fundamental question. I focus more on technicals. Uh, so you would have to do a little bit more research on the fundamentals of the company and how they performed in the previous, right? So this is not really a one snapshot question that I can answer. Uh, DPZ, once again, guys, please write some sort of reference uh, and context that I can uh, refer. Uh, first ticker we are taking a look at is FSOY, uh, fell down, is it worth going in? Um, it did fall 5%, but I think it still ha does have a lot of room to the downside. Uh, just because there's a gap that needs to be filled here, it did get filled. Uh, we did see some push to the upside. Um, once again, if this is a company that you believe in the long term, the best thing that you can do is DCA, dollar cost averaging, right? There's no such thing as a perfect exit. There's no such thing as a perfect entry. Buy some here, buy some here, buy some here, buy some here, right? Um, that's the best thing you can do. But as far as short term, what we're seeing is uh, uh, it did drop pretty aggressively. I do not know exactly why this uh, catalyst. Oh, wow. So a little bit more. I felt so why. So it did drop significantly, actually. And this is a crucial level of support. Um, I think it still has room down to 73 just because this is the main level of support that it has. Um, if it breaks below 85, I think it has room down to 80. Below 80, it definitely has room down to 73. Only then would I look to buy it. Um, other than that, um, in fact, right now, it's actually completely undervalued around 10, 27 points on the RSI. So it wouldn't be too bad of a decision to, uh, you know, buy it on this considering the RSI being relatively at uh, 27 points. But anytime a stock does significantly fall, for example, something like this around 135 to a low of 85, you have to be very careful and understand what is the reasoning behind this. Because if this is a trend that's going to potentially continue, you have to be very, very careful. Um, any level for Amazon? Can we go back? Uh, Amazon, we already went over, but Let's see, uh, Amazon, yeah. So my, my levels are right there if you want to take a look on uh, 333, around uh, 3340, right? Crucial level of resistance break above that. I wouldn't be too surprised if we hit around 3400. Above that, 3400, I think we have room to around 3500, right? Um, Facebook this week, let's take a look at Facebook, right? So Facebook, a lot of these big techs, are sitting around this uh, crucial level of uh, the simple moving average, the 50-day simple moving average. So uh, if they break below that, we might see some push to the downside. But once again, there is a lot of talks regarding the stimulus. I think Nancy Pelosi uh, says that uh, the White House has till Tuesday. So a lot of investors are going to be waiting. Uh, once again, we can do as much technical analysis as we want, but anytime there's some sort of news that comes out, it's going to throw your technical analysis out the window. But as far as Facebook, right, it's very similar to a lot of these other tickers. Like I said, crucial level of support. Um, if it breaks below around 263.74, uh, I think it has some room to the downside. Um, I wouldn't really play the stock to the upside as of right now as far as short-term options or any specific strategy like that. And the only reason why is because it has no specific direction. As you can see, it hit a high of 307, consolidated, came back down, uh, dip low, 
formed a double bottom, pushed back up, and now it just doesn't have no specific direction, right? So when I look to trade, I look to find a, a stock that has a direction, but I don't see that with the stock. So um, I'm not going to really uh, touch it as much. But for anyone that does want to learn how to make money with a, for, when a stock has no direction, there are ways to do that as well, right? There are advanced option strategies where you can make money from a stock staying within a specific range, right? You don't have to make money when the stock goes to the up side. You don't have to make money when the stock goes to the down. So you can in fact make money with options when the stock stays between a specific range, right? Uh, once again, those are courses that we do offer through Urban Food Alliance. So definitely guys get a little bit more information on that. Um, anything on Boeing? Boeing, let's take a look at Boeing. Um, Boeing still, you know, once again, range bound, right? There has not been any significant price direction for this. We did get it. We did get it to break below 153, and then the right the next day, what did we see? A strong push to the upside. Now the stock says see some resistance around 175, right? So 175 is a crucial level of resistance right now. Uh, a break above that, uh, we would I would like to see it maybe play around to 181, 184 area. Um, other than that, it's once again also at that sim at that uh, 50 day simple moving average. Um, once again, this stock, a lot of these stocks don't really have the specific direction, especially for something like Boeing, right? I mean, we look at Boeing for such a long time. What has it been doing, right? It has not been able to break out of this little channel it's been stuck in right here, right? I mean, it's just continued, right? We did get a minor break, but the next day it's shot right back into this, right? So we're just seeing it bounce up between 153 and 195. Um, so that's as far as Boeing. Um, Netflix, please give some sort of context here. Roku and Peloton, after these pops, upcoming earnings, will it tend to push further? Uh, stocks do tend to go higher into earnings. Not all, but most do. Um, but let's take a look at uh, Roku, right? So um, Roku, mid-valued on the RSI, side, so it's not too expensive, not too cheap. But what we're seeing is it does have some more room to the downside. So I think it has room to 218, uh, and then it can potentially move uh, to the upside again just because it still has to hit that moving average there. But as you can see, it did respect this trend line for quite some time. Uh, recently, it broke below it, so that is a negative sign. But uh, let's see how the price action plays out, and uh, only then I think I would uh, make a decision. Peloton after these pops, so Peloton, right? So Peloton has been having a nice trend line to the upside. If we draw on this, right? So Peloton is actually still respecting this trend line here, right? What we're seeing is it's just the, it's getting more and more aggressive as it pushes up right here, right? So we did get a, a red day. Uh, on the previous market, on the previous trading day. Uh, once again, mid-valued on the RSI, so it's hard to make an assumption. But if it does break below this uh, trend line, my price target is going to be around 122, and I would play puts to the downside. Uh, but, I mean, the trend still looks pretty bullish right now, right? I mean, as you guys can see, it's sitting pretty nicely above that trend line. And this might have been some, some simple profit taking. We don't know. Um, what is a good price to re-enter Blink? Um, a good price to re-enter Blink, um, I would say, uh, if it, if it dips around eight, um, around eight dollars, then I would buy a little bit more. But other than that, I mean, I'm not uh, looking to re-enter. I have a decent position in this right now. So, like I said, I uh, simply don't like to, you know, time the best exit, the best entry. I just like to spend enough time within the certain stock where I can continue buying a little bit more every day and uh, have the best average as I can. Uh, but for this specific stock, I think uh, right here is where we bought the first time. And I think a lot of people sold around $12 mark um, or around the 766. But like I said, I'm still holding this. I still think the stock has a little bit more room to the upside. Um, DPC earnings were good, but went down. Um, yeah, so once again, as far as earnings go, even if earnings are reported good, stocks can fall, right? There's, there's no such thing. There's no law that says if a stock reports good earnings, the stock has to go up, right? There's a lot more that goes into uh, the earnings of a stock. Um, Pfizer, some news around vaccine, right? So once again, that is a stock that you cannot do as much technical analysis on. And the reason why is because it's simply catalyst driven. Someday it's going to be shooting down. Someday it's going to be shooting up. Someday it's going to be shooting down. Um, but it's hard to do, like I said, technical analysis on this. And the reason why is because it's purely catalyst driven, right? Vaccine news. But if I were to do anything on this, I would say that there is forming some sort of wedge pattern here, right? I don't know if this is happening through price action or catalyst, right? So this can either 
be a really good sign for that the stock is setting up for a nice little breakout or this is obviously just uh, not a uh, an accurate uh, representation of uh, what the stock price is really doing but uh, this is what I see with Pfizer as far as uh, news around the vaccine you simply have to wait one thing that you can do if you're looking to wait on uh, some sort of news that's coming out for a specific stock is uh, get access to our Benzinga right Benzinga is a is a is a news service that's uh, you know very accurate very quick so a lot of people like to trade biotechs pharmaceuticals they they refer to a lot of the, uh, the services that UFA provides one of which is Benzinga uh, how does NASDAQ index QQQ look this week? So we already touched on that, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But um, let's see. Let's clear this so we can see it better. Right. The Qs, right. I mean, I think uh, we're, we've been seeing a nice push to the upside, right? I mean, a beautiful push to the upside. And now what we're seeing is a nice little cup form. Uh, if we do get a retest, I would consider this a cup and handle formation. Uh, and then I would like to see it break above. Let's see a little bit closer. Um, yeah, so as you can see, a nice little cup and handle formation forming. Uh, if we do get a push above this again, around two, 295, 296. If we do get a push above 296, I wouldn't be too surprised if we hit 300. If we hit 300, I think that's going to be a bullish indication, right? But as of right now, I think we still look pretty bullish, right? We're still sitting above that 50-day simple moving average. Um, what is the consensus on Guild? They are reporting earnings on the 23rd. Their remdesivir sales is expected to be high, but I'm not sure about their forward guidance. But with their recent acquisition of immunodemics, they are expected to perform well in the next two to three years. What is your take? Thanks in advance. Sure. Um, so as far as technicals, right, I mean, you can't, once again, I always say this when it comes to a lot of these pharmaceuticals, you cannot do technical analysis on these as much. But um, as far as what you're telling me, as far as the remdesivir sales being good, there's just a lot more that goes into uh you know, determining whether stock is going to be good long term. I, I can't answer that question in, in a snapshot with all the information that you gave me. One thing that I would say is if you take a look at uh, some possible bullish activity, let's see. Um, let's see anything going on. Yeah, so nothing really crazy as far as large option trades being placed on the previous market day. But uh, let's see. I mean. sixty-one sixty-five seems to be a strong level of support. But uh, you would have to do a little bit more research on the fundamental side of uh, Gilead Sciences. Uh, Twitter and Snap earning play. Uh, once again, when it comes to earnings, you have to simply, I personally don't play earnings unless I have a specific option strategy that uh, seems to be working for me. Uh, I mainly use straddles or strangles or butterfly iron condor strategies for uh, earnings. But once again, this is not something that I do all the time. Um, same thing with Snap. Um, you have to know a little bit more about the fundamentals of the company. Let's see, uh, CMG, Chipotle, they have good handle on sales via app with earnings and potential tests at new high. Exactly. You know, stocks do tend to go higher into earnings, right? We're all looking at the bullish sentiment in a lot of these stocks. You just have to understand that there's a lot more that goes into uh, how the stock is going to perform. Um, let's see, uh, what else? We have? SPC had some pop and then consolidated now showing signs to go up your view. Sure. I mean, let's take a look at Virgin Galactic. Uh, I think Virgin Galactic was up, upgraded. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to. Yeah, so let's take a look at Virgin Galactic. What we're seeing with Virgin Galactic is it did have some resistance around this price point right here. And what we're seeing is it recently broke above it. We did see some selling pressure around 23.36. If we do get a nice pop above that, uh, 23.41, I think it does have some more room to the upside. Once again, this stock, just like many other, does not have any specific direction. It recently gapped up and it's just been, you know, having a nice push to the upside. But what I would like to see is uh, some sort of uh, upgrades. If it, if it continues to get upgrades, I think that would be another bullish indication. Um, and let me take a look at if there's any unusual options activity going on. Um, yeah, so nothing significant in the options activity that I'm seeing. Um, that's as far as uh, SPC. Moving on. XLF and financials uh, still good to stay in or is in range bound for a while. 
Um, let's take a look at the chart. Yeah, I mean, this stock, I mean, anytime you see a moving average sort of, uh, you know, plateau and become a straight line, that's that's usually a sign that a stock has, uh, you know, become range bound. As you see here, it's in, you know, kind of in this trend line right here. It's just been sort of bouncing up or and around this moving average. So this stock would need, a, you know, this would need some clear direction. But I think this happens usually around uh, the elections. Let's see what else we have. Um, thanks for great insurance. Um, DPZ hold January 420 calls, hold their average out. Um, I mean, let's just take a look at this. Uh, Right, I mean this this specific ticker, right? I mean, as far as the upside, it does have a gap that needs to be filled around this area right here, right? So around 4:30, it does have a gap that needs to be filled. But the day that this stock did drop, it had an increase in significant, almost I think uh, quadruple the volume, right? From almost a million shares to the next day, almost 3.7 million shares that were traded that day, right? Um, there does there is a gap that needs to be filled there. But as far as uh, Let's take a look. Hold January 21st, 420 calls. Hold or average out, right? Um, that all depends on your risk tolerance, right, guys? It's always hard for me to tell someone whether they should hold, buy, or average just because everyone has a different risk tolerance. I sometimes am willing to uh, close out my entire position at you know 0% loss just because I can tolerate that risk. Some, some, sometimes I'm not. So it all depends on your risk tolerance. I would need a little bit more information on that, but let's see. Uh, someone else says UPWK due to COVID uh, work from home. Is it good to enter at this level? Um, let's take a look. UPWK. I'm not familiar with this stock. Um, stock is up significantly from five bucks. Almost a nice rally to the upside. A little bit on the overextended side. It does have a lot more room to cover to the downside. Um, recently, I mean, what I've seen as far as just what I what I'm picking up right now is it tends to respect the moving average. As you can see, it. it Anytime it moves, it makes a nice move to the upside, it's bouncing off that moving average, it's bouncing off, and then boom, it pops to the upside. So now I wouldn't be too surprised that if it uh, either consolidates or comes back. I wouldn't, I, don't, I wouldn't expect it to come down exactly to $16, but if any case scenario, it does come down, and I do look to buy into this again, one area that I would look is around $17.58, right? That seems to be a previous level of resistance, and it's not going to act as a strong level of support. Um, let's see a little bit on the... On the on a shorter time frame. Yeah, so it's approaching support again, right? So if it breaks below 1973, a good time to buy might be around that 1758. Um, what's up with AMD? I don't know what's up with AMD. Let's take a look. Right, very similar as well, right? AMD has been having a nice push to the upside, made a high of 94.28, nice little cup here, nice little handle here, 87.22, some resistance. Above 87.22, I'd like to play to around 94, 95 dollars uh, as far as calls. Uh, in any case scenario, it does break to the downside. Uh, 80 dollars is my level of support. A break below that, I would scalp it or day trade it or swing trade it uh, to 78. Below that, I think has room to 76.33, and below that, 73.6. Um, workhorse WKHS. Let's take a look at that. Um, Right, so it's at a crucial level of support, right? This is a crucial level, as you can see, previous level of resistance, now acting as crucial level of support. That's what we're seeing here. So 2151 is a good time to buy, in my opinion, right? We're seeing a lot of people bought the dip around this area. And I don't really trade this company at all, actually, so I wouldn't want to say too much on it. But as far as technicals, this is what we're seeing, right? Um, volume has died out, right? I mean, we're not seeing significant amount volume here. But 2151 seems to be a previous uh, strong level of support. If we get a break below that, I wouldn't be too surprised if we, if this stock sees some downside. And the only reason why is because anytime a stock has some significant gains to the upside, has some significant gain uh, losses to the downside as well, right? Anytime a stock gains parabolically, you have to understand the stocks do have the tendency to uh, replicate that on the downside as well. So just be prepared for that if any case scenario that does happen. Um, I'm going to do about two more, and then uh, I'm going to switch it over to uh, anyone else who would like to contribute for tonight's market talk. Thank you guys all for joining in advance. Uh, what about Costco? Some special dividend talks. Um, Costco, I think that's simply a catalyst, right? If there's if there is some sort of news that's going to come out about Costco, uh, that's obviously going to push the stock up. Uh, in any case scenario, about a potential special dividend stock, right? I'm not familiar with it, so I don't know uh, much about that. Seeking FDA approval on 24th, 
Um, once again, if you are looking to trade any biotechs or these uh, pharma uh, pharma pharmaceutical stocks or any F F any stocks that require FDA approvals, just understand that the best thing that you can do is have access to a, a, a news service that can give you that news really quickly so you can jump on it as soon as possible, as well as have access to unusual options activity, uh, some dark pool data, see where if there's any large institutional money coming in uh, for a lot of these stocks. Uh, and that's something that you guys can use um, for biotechs, right? I mean, seeking FDA approval, that is usually a good sign for them and they, they tend to spike on that, but they're very risky. Um, okay, you missed Visa, right? So Visa is going to be the last one I'm going to do. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm new. Are those white lines pivot dots, pivot points? Uh, so these white lines are not pivot points on my chart. These are actually my levels of support and resistance that I've drawn myself. Uh, for those of you that have been with us for quite some time, know that I do teach uh, advanced technical analysis. And a lot of people have had a lot of success uh, trading with my key levels. My uh, key levels are simply based on price action, volume, uh, and a few other technical technical analysis tools. Um, so these are not pivot points to answer your question. This is simply uh, my my level of support and resistance that I draw based on price action. Um, you miss Visa. Um, I don't really know what exactly you want me to take a look at Visa, but uh, what we're simply seeing is uh, range bound, right? It's no, no clear direction. Um, Let's see if I can sort of find something. I mean, there's no specific clear direction, right? I mean, there's nothing that I'm really seeing here with Visa. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, I actually don't have much to say about the stock. I don't really know much about financials, about the company. As far as technicals go, right? I mean, it's mid-valued on the RSI around 46 points. Uh, it's not too high. It's not too low. Uh, I mean, that's all I have for the for this specific trick. So, guys, thank you guys all for joining once again. Uh, this, there's a lot of value that you guys can gain from becoming an Urban Food, uh, I'm sorry, a UFA member. So definitely reach out. And on top of that, there's a lot of benefits, right? We are also a nonprofit where we take uh, the funds that we receive and we help feed the needy. Once again, that is just one part of what we do. We also help you guys educate yourself as well as teach you guys, give you guys on-demand videos and access and uh, mentor programs. Uh, and help you guys, you know, really enhance your, your subscription level. And there's different levels to the different kind of memberships you can get. Each one provides its own kind of value. Um, so once again, for those of you that are new, definitely reach out, get some more information about that. For some of you that were, you know, sitting through this presentation and were a little bit confused, uh, you know, the best thing you can do is educate yourself, take the courses, and really take your trading and uh, uh, personal financial education to the next level. Um, so that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. Visit our website, urbanhood.org, and join our community at meetup.com and look for financial freedom for you. Thank you, and we hope to see you soon.